Hi, everyone, and welcome. We'll get just a few minutes. Good to see some people from Texas, although I see in Austin, Texas, hopefully my football helmet is not uh, offensive, but it is part of the decorations for today. It is offensive. Well, no one asked Josh, but for everyone else, <laughs> my apologies. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, let's get started. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Get Cozy with ThinkShield's MXDR powered by Critical Start. My name is Victoria, and I am the Channel and Field Marketing Manager over here at Critical Start for the East Coast. Um, just to go over some housekeeping items beforehand, this session is being recorded. Uh, you'll receive the recording within 24 hours post-event. Uh, we will be launching polls throughout the presentation, so please be sure to only click your answer once or else it will disappear. Uh, get chatty, which some of you already are. Um, interact with other attendees, with us, ask questions. Um, it makes the presentation 10 times better. And you are muted. Uh, if you'd like to ask questions live, please click raise your hand and we will bring you up on stage. Otherwise, place your question in the chat or text Q&A. And now for the fun stuff. So throughout this presentation, we will be giving away raffle items. So you must be interacting with the polls to win um, in the chat, asking questions, um, and you will be selected at random and announced throughout the event. Uh, please be on the lookout from an email for me from me uh, the asking for your address so we can get that uh, gift out to you. So with that, I'm going to pass it on over to Josh. Perfect. And actually, Josh, I'll, I'll take it just from a let's set the stage perspective. So so again, thank you, everybody, for joining today. Uh, you know, we are going to be discussing Lenovo MXDR powered by Critical Start. Uh, there are two speakers. Uh, one is Josh, who's on the phone as well from Lenovo, uh, you know, senior security software executive. Uh, I talked to him quite a bit. So again, to Victoria's point, uh, the more interactive this can be, you put questions in chat. If you have a question you want to ask uh, verbally, again, raise your hand. We can bring you on stage. You can ask those questions. Uh, myself, Tommy Scott, I'm the uh, the Global Director of Business Development for Critical Start here, uh, helping to bring you know the Lenovo MXDR service to market. Uh, but regarding the agenda, you know this was in the invite, but I like to set the stage and make sure we're all very clear on you know what we're going to talk about, what we want to cover, and then hopefully it gives you some ideas where where questions could be applicable. Uh, but first and foremost, giveaway prizes. You know, this is very much a give to get. Uh, we wanted your attendance and we're happy to, uh, you know, start off the holidays a little bit early for you. Uh, but Josh will be talking about overall the Lenovo ThinkShield portfolio, the different layers of protection it can provide within your uh, within your environment. And then he'll pass it over to me. We'll talk about, you know, a couple of things about the, the rise in cybercrime, where it's going, uh, a couple of quote unquote fun facts as well. Uh, and then we'll pivot over to really how the the X, the, the cross-platform detection and response is crucial to, you know, your security story and how Lenovo and Critical Start have partnered to, you know, help your organization do more with less. So that's the agenda. That's the foundation of what we want to talk about today. Again, keeping it as interactive as you would like, you know, we highly suggest that that is what really uh, facilitates us to be able to give away the raffle prizes. But with that being said, Josh, I will go to the next slide and pass it over to you. 
Thank you, Tommy. Um, just take a couple seconds here. Um, just wanted to make everybody aware um, as you're going through your security initiatives in Lenovo, we have a very, uh, very strong solutions portfolio that I like to say we can take care of you from the pocket to the cloud, right? Everything from your mobile devices, whether Android or uh, iOS, all the way up to Kubernetes workloads, if you have those as well. So um, if you have any security initiatives on your roadmap and you would like to discuss that with their AE, please bring those up to them. Please get them connected with the right people because we have some of the best partners out there in the industry and we can do everything. So any of these initiatives that you may have on your plate, whether it's, um, you know, XDR, whether it's a firmware patching and updates, uh, firmware security, um, supply chain management as well. Uh, we are one of the only OEMs out there that take advantage of a special supply chain program with Intel and AMD. So be sure to ask your reps about that as well. But I don't want to take up any more time. I definitely want to get to a critical start because they, to me, are the uh, warm blanket that makes you cozy and wraps everything all together for your security stack. Tommy? No, absolutely. So me and Josh, we speak to each other uh, rather frequently, but this is our time to, to really hear what you have to say. So this is our first opportunity to uh, start the holidays a little bit early. So I believe Victoria is going to open up a poll question. Uh, if you wouldn't mind going ahead responding to that, uh, we'll give it just about a minute for responses to come in. Victoria, if you let me know when to proceed, uh, we'll go ahead and do that. Just waiting for a couple more people to participate in the polls. Perfect. Remember, the more you participate, the higher chance you have of winning a prize. All right. All right, are you ready for me to, to move on? Yes, and Cecily will put the winner in the chat for you for Perfect. the $250 Amazon gift card. Perfect, so Cecily, again, the winner's name is Tommy Scott. I think you know how to spell that, but uh, no, hopefully who won. Uh, again, happy holidays, but you know, where I wanna start is you know, talk about you know, what is the industry of cybersecurity? What are customers facing? And so, you know, the evolution of cybercrime, a lot of what I'm going to talk about isn't, isn't something that should be novel to this group. It, it shouldn't be too educational, but it, it is confirmation that what you're hearing, what you've been told, there is going to be a continued significant increase in impact within the cybersecurity landscape from cyber criminals. And really, that's focused around the increased use of advanced persistent threats. And so originally, if you think about advanced persistent threats, APTs, they were really designed for nation state level attacks. But as you know, the techniques cyber criminals are using you know, continue to, to evolve, they, there's a lower threshold, uh, a lower barrier of entry for them to be utilized. And so what we're seeing again is, is not just initial compromise, but cyber criminals starting to really gain a true foothold into our customers' environments, or rather into customer environments as a whole because they want to execute targeted attacks. It's no longer what was called spray and pray. It's how can they breach a specific customer, find out what is most valuable, and then launch the full-scale attack. And so cyber criminals are likely to refine their APT techniques, you know, making detection and makes mitigation even more challenging. And so this could involve the incorporation of artificial intelligence, machine learning, and so I specifically wanted to have those two words on the slide, because, again, if, if you're not saying artificial intelligence in a, a sales presentation, you know, it, it can't be taken seriously nowadays. Because while customers, manufacturers are working to adopt AI, ML into their security ecosystem, cyber criminals, malicious actors are adopting it at a very quick rate as well. So they're leveraging these, these new, faster capabilities, you know, to create those advanced social engineering, you know, spear phishing campaigns have the likelihood of their campaigns to be successful, have that increase significantly. 
But again, as I mentioned, these APT level attacks traditionally were once associated with either it's espionage, it's critical infrastructure, it's nation state level attacks. But what we've seen again, because that barrier of entry is decreasing, we're seeing a much higher prevalence of the, these new types of attacks against specific verticals. So financial uh, institutions, healthcare organizations, you know, large corporations, that the risk they're expected to increase are, are gonna, you know, exponentially increase over expected the next 12 months. Because the financial gains from these attacks in these verticals are expected to be extremely lucrative for cyber criminals. And so while the rise of these new techniques, again, you know, will likely result in increased regulatory scrutiny, you know, legal repercussions, you know, while these regulations may be introduced, you know, we as service providers, you as customers really need to focus on how can we do better to identify uh, these attacks in the environment. And so really that starts with collaboration. You know, how can we work together to ensure that we're not specifically focusing on one, one vertical? We're utilizing threat intelligence, whether it's threat intelligence feeds, it's threat intelligence sharing organizations, we're creating groups to, to co combat specific types of attacks versus just defending against specific verticals. And so with that doesn't you know, come with the, the increased cybersecurity investment. And that comes both from the customer side and the manufacturer side, the service provider side. How can we use technologies better, increase better visibility, respond quicker using AI ML capabilities? And one of the reasons I like to bring that up again is, you know, with the impact and the advent of malware as a service. So again, the sophistication of attacks has increased significantly. The barrier of entry to utilize them has dropped significantly as well. And so, you know, we as cybersecurity professionals, again, both sales and customer, we're all in it to prevent breaches, prevent business disruption. So we have to remain vigilant, adaptable to mitigate the risks posed by these cyber criminals. And again, I promise this slide wasn't going to be overly educational because a lot of these things should be known to this industry. But what we want to focus on is, is how can we truly act on it? Act on the knowledge that, you know, next year cybercrime is not going to go away. It's become more prevalent of a problem. How do we successfully address that? But hopping off the back of just giving away a gift card, I do have some fun facts that I say we'll bring some holiday cheer, but I don't know if that's necessarily the truth. Because what I want to focus on is being very real and pragmatic on what are the threat vectors facing customer organizations. So I picked a couple of statistics that uh, myself as, as a former uh, information security professional before I joined the sales side, you know, some things that, that were true five years ago and rem remain true today. So about three out of five organizations that participated in this, this cybersecurity buyer intelligence report, about three out of five organizations reported at least one compromise in the preceding 12 months. So that's a significant amount of compromise. And if you think about why is that such a high number? And it's because again, about 60% of the respondents were confident that at least 75% of their endpoints were receiving monitoring around the clock. Now, the word confident is a bit of a misnomer here because the number is at least 75%. Even if it was 90%, that means there's 10% of customer organizations that are still going unmonitored. And that presents true risk to the business. But it, again, it's not always a customer problem. It's they don't have enough time, enough people. It's something that is pervasive across the industry. And because of that, if you, if you poll you know, most customers, what is the, the highest uh, degree of planned investment? What technologies is it for? It's really around two things. How can AI ML be better leveraged to uh, create better outcomes? And then also on endpoint security, how can XDR become uh, part of the story? How can you get visibility beyond the endpoint? So significant investment is planned for those two categories. But again, it's all about outcomes. Can we focus on how to get the correct outcomes from what you potentially are going to be investing in. So if we go down, one of the things I like to point out is, uh, you know, I'm here today with Lenovo, traditional hardware manufacturer. But how do we get visibility beyond the endpoint? And so one of the reasons we partnered with Lenovo is, again, uh, to Josh's point, going above and beyond the OS. 
So if you look at what are the attack vectors, so the, the 2023 IBM cost of a data breach report, extremely popular report, very easy to go look up online. 16% uh, of attacks involved abuse of valid accounts. And so this is something where you have to start thinking about really taking a look into insider threats, not necessarily saying the people inside your organization are threats, but their accounts could be compromised and used for malicious activity. And that represents about one out of every six attacks. But as we, we've expected you know, consistently over the last five or so years, phishing remains the number one initial uh, access vector for 40% of all attacks. So 40% of the attacks that were successful last calendar year, phishing was the number one initial access vector. Again, visibility beyond the endpoint. And then to wrap up these quote unquote fun facts, uh, again, there is a significant prioritization this coming calendar year on detection and response capabilities. It's about not just procuring the right technology, it's fully leveraging it, fully optimizing it, get the value promised through the sales cycle, get it you know, day one and day 100. But again, one of the issues is, is more technology equals more work. So how can you leverage partners to ensure that you're getting uh, the effective outcomes from those new technologies? And again, ransomware, it's still the most common attack itself, representing a little over one in four attacks last calendar year. Uh, and about 70% of all respondents in this Ponemon Institute report uh, expect to face at least one ransomware attack next calendar year. And so it's not so much uh, if it happens, it's more about when it happens, are you appropriately prepared? So this was the, the, the somewhat educational, let's set the landscape of really what are our customers facing? What do we need to plan for, strategize against? Uh, but the number one item again on our agenda was giving away prizes. Uh, so Victoria, I will turn it back to you to open up an additional poll question. Uh, and then we will uh, have the raffle winner announced in the chat shortly after. Perfect. Give it a few. And I guess while that's going, we'll at least put put what the prize is. Ooh. Again, Cecily, it's T O M M Y S C O T T. <laughs> All right, and then it blows up. It looks like a lot of people responded to this one. So Cecily will get the winner in just a few. All right, excellent. So, so going forward, if we think about, you know, critical start, our partnership with Lenovo, focusing on, you know, MXDR, managed detection and response, the X being uh, cross-platform. So what we want to focus on is how can we effectively utilize tools our customers have invested in today or potentially looking to invest in tomorrow? How can we ensure they're getting the appropriate outcomes? And so we want to address you know, the gaps that do create cybersecurity risk. But really, when we think about what are those gaps from a detection and response perspective, you know, MDR has traditionally been used as a foundational component for customers. Because some of the gaps you, know, you face today, and again, you know, part of the questions that we have today are, are you facing some of these, uh, some of these concerns, is, is not enough people. You know, that's, a, that's a tale as old as time understanding that we would all like to build our own organization up, do it ourselves internally, but there's a, there's a lot of uh, capabilities and strategy to be had with partnering because hiring people, keeping people, keeping them trained is a very difficult task for customers to undertake. But from a detection perspective, again, it, it's that level of expertise to keep up with the malicious actors. So about 80% of successful attacks last year were due to brand new or undisclosed zero days. So it's a constantly evolving uh, necessity to keep up with the latest tactics, techniques, and procedures. And for customers who are having multiple priorities, having to do multiple things, it, it's the, the metaphor of you know, the person who wears many hats. Keeping up with those latest trends is extremely difficult. And what it can lead to sometimes is products that are misconfigured or, or more importantly, ineffective detections. 
detections that don't truly answer the question, what happened and why? And so from a response perspective, it, it becomes increasingly difficult for, for customers to understand where do I need to respond? Why do I need to respond? How do I need to respond? Because there, the environment's complex. The tools are not truly talking towards to each other. They're independent. And so what that leads to is an inability to really prove the effectiveness of your security program. It's not that customers aren't, aren't doing the right things. It's that there's too much to do. And again, not enough people, not enough time. And what that more often than not leads to is a lack of 24 seven coverage. And every alert that goes uninvestigated represents risk for the organization. And so critical start, we've been delivering MXDR services for about, for about a decade at this point. Uh, and over our entire customer base, about 60% of attacks happen after hours. And so not just the lack of 24 seven coverage, the lack of after hours coverage. That's something that is a core component that organizations need to have, but unfortunately can't always effectively staff for. But where traditional MDR has fallen short, there's always the question of, you know, are they good or, or are they just lucky? How can providers prove the effectiveness and the value of their service? And so this is where you start to get into the idea of how is the service delivered? So is the provider investigating every alert or are they doing what we call priority-based tuning, selective alert investigation? So if you think about a, a tool that's generating alerts, you know, oftentimes alerts, uh, you'll see marketing terms, reference them as noise. How do you handle the noise? Uh, but from our perspective, it's not noise, they're data points. There are things that should be investigated. And so if you think internally about things you may have done, you know, in a previous role or, or things you've heard of other uh, customers doing, one way to handle the noise is to turn it off. That's not a, that's not an approach that Critical Start suggests, but it does allow you to quote unquote, handle the noise or only focus on high priority alerts, criticals and highs. Mediums and lows will be uh, if we have time to get to it. But unfortunately, any alert that goes uninvestigated, again, represents risk for you, the customer. And so that priority-based tuning or selective alert investigation leaves risk on the table. But when a service provider is delivering a service, you need to be able to you know, trust and verify. So organizations that adopt a black box approach where we promise we'll do something and we'll present you a ticket once we're done. Full transparency is something that not many MDR providers are gonna deliver. Because again, the ability to investigate everything is extremely hard to achieve and they don't want to be held accountable. But from a response perspective, it's managed detection and response. The ability to take action is a crucial component of why many customers are moving towards an MDR model to augment their internal security capabilities. But if, if either A, the provider doesn't take response, it's, it's recommended response guidance only, that's not tremendously valuable. Telling you something happened, but not telling you what you need to do next, that's not a value add to you, the customer. Or if there's a lack of confidence in the response actions because they're not broad enough, they're not capable enough. Again, every time an alert goes uninvestigated or is not effectively responded to with uh, appropriate guidance, that represents risk for you, the customer. So what Critical Start wanted to build to really help ensure we're effectively managing risk and then proving the value of a partnership with Lenovo and Critical Start is first from a detection perspective, how can we decrease the time to value? You as a customer may potentially invest in a partnership with Lenovo and Critical Start. If you think about MXDR, it's an input output system. We need to ensure that what is going into MXDR is effective, it's correct. It's providing the right level of visibility. And this really goes along the lines of a, a tool configuration, a health check. Ensuring the visibility we have is going to deliver security value outcomes. The log sources we're looking at are valuable. So if security is the mandate, let's make sure there's actual security alerts that are being generated from those log sources. If there is no value in monitoring it, Let's make that recommendation that maybe it does not need to be monitored and you can recognize some cost savings from a collection perspective. But more importantly, from a detection perspective, how can we shrink attacker dwell time? How can we catch them sooner? 
How can we leverage certain AI ML capabilities within the Critical Start platform to make sure you receive a 10 minute contractual notification for all critical alerts? Because while investigating alerts of every priority is a priority for us, we wanna make sure that if the tool indicates something is critical, it does get the appropriate attention. But then again, from an input output perspective, we wanna think about how can we increase the detection effectiveness in your environment? Make sure the tools are working appropriately and they're generating as much visibility as possible. And so this story is applicable beyond the endpoint. It's identity, it's email, it's cloud, it's network. How can we map the log sources in your environment to the MITRE ATT&CK framework, understand where there's gaps, leverage our custom detections, our cyber research unit, our threat detection engineering team? How can we leverage those capabilities together to generate more visibility? Make sure we're covering the gaps inside of your environment from a detection perspective. Because ultimately what we want to do is help improve your team efficiency. You know, there is a reason a, a partnership with Critical Start and Lenovo is engaged in in the first place. And that's typically not enough time, not enough people. And so how can we take on that tier one, tier two coverage? But how can we make sure we're tailoring the service to you, tailoring the service to your organization? When are we allowed to respond? What response actions are we allowed to take? Let's make sure the service is customized to you versus just a simple cookie cutter service. And with that comes again, the transparency, complete visibility into what we're doing, why we're doing it, but more importantly, who is doing it? Because there still is a very important people component to the service. AI and ML very much has its place from a detection perspective, response where necessary, but people are still able to understand context. It's not just that alerts occur, it's why did they occur? So direct collaboration between your team and our risk and security operations center, our people, our analysts. That is something we want you to see at any given moment, who is doing what, why, and when inside your environment. But ultimately it's all in the vein of reducing risk, improving your security posture. Investigation and response to every alert across endpoints, uh, SIM, cloud, XDR, again, that XDR story, cross-platform detection and response delivering our service with a contractual 60 minute time to resolution. And that's a contractual service level agreement. It is not a promise to do our best. It is we have a contractual agreement to investigate, respond to all alerts across those data sources within 60 minutes. But I mentioned we do very much tailor this to you. There are situations where we will be told not to respond. And so what we've done is we've taken the capabilities of the technologies in your environment, where we have direct integration mechanisms, and we've created a mobile version of the platform we utilize. So that allows you to directly communicate with our risk and security operation analysts in real time. It allows you to take responsive actions where necessary. So really helping, again, shrink attacker dwell time, reduce your risk, and ultimately push your security posture forward. So it is time for me to uh, take a break and uh, let a poll question go. And while that's pulling up, I will put up, I guess, the prize for that poll question. And then Victoria, again, I will defer to you on when you feel it's appropriate to continue. Great. We have a couple trickling in. Waiting for a couple more. All right. All I'm right. Close out, and Cecily will have the winner to you shortly. Perfect. We will continue with just a couple more slides, and I think I might actually be able to get you back to your day a little bit sooner than uh, than promised. But part of what I like here is, you know, I mentioned I come from the customer background. Uh, I still lean more technical than sales, and, and part of what I like to show here is is the how is it done? Because I mentioned a couple high level outcomes: reducing risk, increasing security posture, shrinking attacker dwell time. But how it's done does still matter. How can we help you achieve those outcomes? 
So on the left, if you look at you know a number of different uh, categories there, this is your environment. Again, what we want to focus on is partnering with you to achieve outcomes. But how we do it can change based on uh, maybe the tools you have environment, where you are on your security maturity journey. And so first off, let's let's assume you've got these technologies completely deployed. You're a full Microsoft customer. You're running it on the endpoint. You've got Microsoft Sentinel. You're using Defender for Office, Defender for Identity, et cetera. We can directly connect into your technologies, deliver our service using the capabilities of the tools you've already identified as the best for your environment. But essentially what we're looking for is how can we get as much visibility from your environment across the five pillars of the NIST cybersecurity framework? So at the top, you see identify and protect. Then you see detect and respond, again, the core MXDR. And at the bottom, you see recover. How do we get back to a known good state should it be necessary? So from the posture and gestion perspective, how can we ensure that A, when we integrate into your environment, we ensure there's no gaps from a visibility perspective. If you're leveraging a certain endpoint technology, can we ensure it's deployed across your entire environment? If we think back to that statistic I mentioned about 60% of respondents were confident that at least 70% of their endpoints were monitored. So that should be 100% because any percentage below 100 represents risk that there is a device on your network that is not being effectively secured and uh, correctly monitored. But how do we ensure that, you know, from a peer benchmarking perspective, you don't always wanna go in and say, hey, I'm doing better than the person next to me. But what you can start to get a picture of is, is how are your competitors, how are your peers investing in cybersecurity? It's more data points to allow you to make more informed decisions. But then from an asset inventory perspective, again, where should we have security? What log sources do we have? Do we have effective uh, use cases being generated from those log sources? Because if you collect something, it should be collected with the purpose of monitoring. There should be security value. So that's the first part, ensuring your, your environment is in the right place to effectively take advantage of MXDR services. But then from that analytics and response perspective, this platform, this column you see in the middle, it's called core, cyber operations, risk and response. That's where critical start works out of. So, so don't so much think of us as a technology, think of us as an overlay to the security ecosystem in your environment. We're utilizing your technologies. We're taking 100% of the alerts and that is what we're investigating and responding to. But inside that platform using again, AI ML capabilities, we have a mechanism called the Trusted Behavior Registry. So rather than going out and, and trying to find the bad as quickly as possible, it's automatically resolve the things we definitively know are good. And so that results for our customers in a significant false positive resolution using automated playbooks built on, again, uh, human analyst context, threat intelligence, behavioral analytics, very customized to your environment. And so this isn't something that uh, you know, we purchased a threat and tell feed and just threw it in a platform. Uh, this has been learning we've built up over the last decade, you know, with millions of endpoints, billions of events under surveillance, understanding context, not just that alerts occur, it's why did they occur? What does it actually mean is happening? And so what that process allows is it's a significant amount of alerts to be resolved. And then the rest we simply treat as a threat. We couldn't definitively confirm it's good. So as far as we're concerned, it's not good. And this is where our risk and security operations team gets involved. But at every point in this process so far, you have complete unfettered access to them. Complete transparency into the platform, complete access in terms of communication to the analyst. But what their job is, again, investigate and respond to every alert within the contractual one hour SLA. Every alert of every priority. And should they respond, Again, we will respond using the power of the technology that we integrate to in your environment. We can take a device off the network, disable a user account, pull a malicious email out of an inbox. Again, take some true response actions. But if there is a scenario, whether you're a customer today or you're not, if incident response is necessary, true incident response, boots on the grounds, forensics imaging, you know, determining root cause, how to prevent it going forward, we have a full on-staff IR team that takes advantage of this core platform you see here. 
So by having that centralized location to understand what happened and why, how we can prevent it in the future, it allows that time to recovery, get back to a known good state to be as small as possible. So I will say I've not been monitoring chat. I'm gonna take just a small break to see. All right, looks like a bunch of prize giveaways. So that's perfect. But what I wanna show next is, is again, if we go to this very far box, the customer, the expectation of a partnership with Critical Start with Lenovo, the expectation of MXDR is to take that tier one, tier two triage off your plate, allow you to focus on what truly distinguishes your business from others, allow you to focus on maybe higher priority projects than investigating what are potentially a significant amount of false positives. But when we work with you to set up these rules of engagement, understand when are we allowed to respond on your behalf? What responses are we allowed to take under what scenarios? If you let us know, you know, this is a critical production server. This is a sensitive production account. Do not disable, do not take offline. We want to make sure that if that is our mandate, we're going to give you the ability to take those actions as quickly as possible. And that's why we did create what's called mobile sock. It's the mobile Android iOS version of this core platform. And again, it allows you the customer because this is still a joint partnership, shared responsibility. We want to give you the ability to ask questions, both of our analysts and of your tools. So if there is a sensitive user account compromise, show me when they last signed in. Show me how they last signed in. What O365 activity did they perform? Again, context. We want to give you the ability to make a well-informed decision and then take action as quickly as possible. So straight from that mobile application, again, disable a device, uh, disable a user, reset a password, remove a malicious email from the inboxes across your entire organization. That's what the value of our service is, utilizing the technologies you have in your environment. But I believe one of the, nat the last real nerdy slides is there's a couple of ways to achieve this. So again, the core thing I want to get across today is, is how can Critical Start help you uh, reduce risk, do more with less, and ultimately improve your security posture? So when we think about integrations into endpoint, integrations into certain Microsoft Defender technologies, there's a direct integration for that. But if we think about how do we get you know, endpoint visibility, but beyond as well, there's, there's got to be a logging mechanism. And so for customers, again, where you're at on the security maturity journey perspective, do you have a SIM or do you have a desire to procure one? Critical Start can provide that not just MXDR services, but platform management, the focus on administration of the tool, configuration and customization. Yes, MXDR, but also how do we ensure we're continually reducing risk while also optimizing cost? Because cost is always important. Log collection for the sake of log collection is often compliance. If we want to collect it for security purposes, let's ensure the value is there. But if maybe you don't have a SIM or you have no desire to have one, we have another mechanism called Managed XDR that really allows critical start to bring the logging capability to you. And again, it's not so much what's the technology, it's here's again the outcomes we can help you achieve, get visibility beyond the endpoint ensure we have that enterprise-wide detection uh, capabilities so that we can effectively respond where appropriate. So multiple ways to achieve the same goal, improving your sec security posture, reducing your risk, and doing it in a way that is predictable from both a cost and outcome perspective. So I believe there is one final poll question. I don't believe there is a prize associated to this one, but there is a prize associated to uh, asking a question, uh, whether you want to do it verbally or you want to type it in. Uh, that'll be here in just a moment. But while this poll is up, I'm actually going to, again, just reiterate, what are the key benefits? If you walk away from today understanding one thing, it's that, you know, partnership with Critical Start, with Lenovo, it's focused on risk reduction, breach protection, and prevention. How can we help enhance your cybersecurity posture? But again, do so in a way that's predictable. It's cost effective for security. And so whether that's improving your threat detection, delivering the 24 7 365 monitoring, or actually enhancing the capabilities of the tools you have,
by having something like a mobile sock application, giving you the ability to respond really anytime, anywhere. But from an input output perspective, again, it matters. Do we have the right level of visibility? Are your tools implemented appropriately? Are they detecting the latest you know, tactics, techniques, and procedures? And so that's where having Critical Start help you with not just the log source management, but streamlining the security detection capabilities, increasing your coverage, mapping all alerts to the MITRE ATT&CK framework, understanding where you have good detections versus where maybe there's a growth opportunity. But bottom line is always providing you that 24-7, 365 detection and response capabilities with an industry leading 60 minute uh, timed resolution for all alerts across all priorities. So I believe we had about an hour scheduled today. I may be able to get you out of here sooner, but uh, this is the time where, again, from a questions perspective, I will say there is a raffle associated to this. So if anyone has any questions, please put it in the chat. If you feel like you, you want to be brave and, and come off mute, I know Victoria has a capability to do that, but I will stop here briefly and open up the floor. Victoria, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, there actually is one question. Um, is there a lot of alert handling? Like, can you set the severity of alert, alerts so your mailbox doesn't get spammed? Correct. So this is something where we have some very uh, customized capabilities inside of the platform. And so with the methodology of us resolving false positives up front when we can confirm they're good, it's a very significant high 90s in terms of alert resolution. And so already by default, the a workload that would be on you is significantly less. However, our SOC, their goal is to either A, respond proactively, or B, if their investigation yields the result that this actually is a true positive. It's just not something we had seen before. They can create playbooks, automatically resolve that, and you do not need to be involved. Now, the key here is you don't need to be involved, but you have the opportunity to be. You have full access to that platform. You can see at any given moment, again, who is doing what, why, and when. So from our perspective, the overall alert volume is, is pretty significantly low. We say it's a less than 1% of your overall to total alerts are actually sent to you. But the goal is when we send you notification, if you say, you know what, I think it was William that asked this question. You know, William just hired a new individual. He started running some PowerShell commands. Well, we hadn't seen it before because he's a brand new employee. So let's create playbooks specific to that behavior. If we see it again, automatically resolve it. You won't be notified of the same thing twice. So your mailbox absolutely wouldn't get spammed because that's really what a lot of traditional security providers have turned into. They took alerts from a tool and they just put them into your, your inbox. That's not valuable. That is absolutely not what we strive to do. It's to respond where appropriate, resolve where we can, but don't do that just for the sake of efficiency. Make sure you resolve when it's definitively good and respond where it's appropriate and effective. So I see that is William's question. We have a couple more, yeah. Um, keep them coming, guys. So what type of work have you done with K-12 schools? Absolutely. So we've done quite a bit of work with K-12. And if you, so I'm, I'm going to say a specific scenario, but uh, this could be beyond uh, the specific technology I'm going to reference. But if you think about K through 12, higher education, there is a very strong uh, presence of Microsoft because Microsoft licensing, so the A5 licensing uh, is, is fairly attractive in some scenarios. But what we've done with many K-12s is we go in and historically that's an industry that uh, doesn't have the luxury of having a large security team. And so by default, the outcomes of us resolving false positives at scale, being able to respond on behalf of the customer, that provides significant uh, amount of time back to you, the customer, to focus on other high priority initiatives. But then if you think about the Microsoft ecosystem, it's really about how can we make sure you're fully taking advantage of the variety of technologies? So it's not just Defender for Endpoint, it's Defender for Identity, Email, Cloud, really focusing on fully leveraging the technological capabilities you may already have access to, but either didn't have the time uh, or capability to fully deploy it. So that's where part of the service is focusing on, can we increase that time to value? 
make sure the tools are working effectively because again, input output, if the inputs aren't effective, the outputs won't be valuable. So I've done some significant work in K through 12, again, focusing on taking advantage of the technologies available to you, but more importantly, taking off the significant amount of work from the tier one, tier two analysis, but then the proactive response as well. So I believe Connie, that was your question. Hopefully it was answered effectively. Perfect. Uh, we have another one. Can you share an example of a customer who decided to replace their SIM with your solution? So I, I can, but not a specific customer name. But again, there's a scenario where we have a customer who was a, a large, uh, they had a large deployment of a SIM and they had some compliance requirements, but not everything was compliance. They had a lot of security initiatives, but the, the cost of a SIM, if you think about it traditionally, the more you send to it, the more it, it can cost. And so that's where we have to understand value versus ingestion. If there's something where we can say yes to ingest it in the SIM is gonna cost X amount of dollars, but if you use the critical start logging platform, if you use our capability to say, let's focus on threat centric outcomes. We're not concerned about compliance, we're concerned about collecting network logs, connect, collecting user activity logs, and security is the main goal. We do have a customer that went off from a, a large deployment of a SIM that actually went to a hybrid version. So they didn't necessarily displace the SIM. They were able to decrease costs, have a more efficient, effective environment focused on outcomes. Because again, there are multiple ways we can help customers achieve this. It doesn't just have to be, you have this technology, that's the only path forward. It's let's talk about the outcome of reducing risk, increasing visibility, uh, effective response customized to your environment. And now how we achieve that, should those outcomes be of interest to you, that's where we can be very consultative between Critical Start and Lenovo to make sure the outcomes are mapped effectively to your environment today, as well as a roadmap towards where you're growing. Let's make sure we grow with you and can keep the outcomes consistent across that journey. So Mark, I believe that was your question. I think there may have been one more I missed from Sam. Yep. Uh, does our mobile platform work with various types of MDM solutions and mobile management? So I wouldn't really think of our mobile application as a, as a mobile security tool. It is a security tool in terms of it's a mobile version of our platform. So that core platform I referenced, that, that's a web-based UI. Mobile SOC is just essentially, it's a different window into the same house. It's a way for us to give you the capabilities to investigate and respond as quickly as possible should the scenario of critical start not be allowed to do so on your behalf. We again, just wanna extend our capabilities to you and we did so in a mobile fashion. So again, don't think of it as a MDM or mobile management uh, actually securing the device, but I will say a, a different way to interpret that question. If you're saying, is this something that you could push out using an MDM or mobile management? The answer is yes. Uh, but again, that would be entirely dependent on, on how you have that set up. Great. All right. Any other questions before we finish up? Awesome. Well, Cecily is about to announce the winner. And the winner is... I would drum roll, but <laughs> wait. Sorry, I posted it in the Q&A by accident. <laughs> it looks like William is the winner. Perfect. So as uh, as promised at the beginning, uh, for those who did win, expect an email shortly from Victoria. Uh, I will say for the, uh, the Amazon gift cards, uh, that'll be a little bit easier to achieve delivery. Uh, but for everything else, again, we appreciate uh, everyone on the call. We appreciate you joining. Uh, I know this is taking time out of your day, but again, hopefully it was informative. Hopefully you learned something at a minimum. Maybe you got a prize for it. Uh, but again, should you have any questions, myself, Josh, you can reach out. Uh, to Critical Start Lenovo. We'll have a follow-up for you. Happy to have a conversation, uh, but we appreciate your time and hope you have a good rest of your day and uh, happy holidays. Great. Thank you so much, Tommy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.